Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so what we have going on today is uh, something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I've been searching for something like this forever and haven't actually been able to come across it. So, and I know you guys have been um, looking for something like this too, but this right here is obviously the um, existing um, glass fuse block that, that comes you know, standard with, with the uh, 1966 Mustang. Um, this in particular is obviously my, my 1966 Mustang Coupe. But what we're going to do today is remove this existing glass fuse block and replace it with one of these. This block right here is only like $32 on Amazon and it works great. It also comes with a uh, little plastic cover and at the bottom down there, there's a spot for an extra fuse. So, so it actually, you know, it, it's not much bigger than, than the original. So this can definitely tuck up inside, you know, the factory location up here. So that's, an, and that's what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna swap out these wires and um, plug this right in. So that's the nice thing is that these are just um, simply a, a, a easily swap, uh, for, so for $32, um, it's, it's definitely worth it just to get rid of this old school, uh, fuse block, glass fuse block that is. And then this set of jumpers was like another five bucks. So for $37 to replace this, totally worth it. Now what I've done is I've went ahead and actually labeled every single wire back here. So as you can see up there. Um, I've labeled every single wire. Um, I did some research on the um, wiring diagram and was able to label, you know, which one is a constant hot. So for example, the black and yellow wire is a constant hot. The green and black is labeled um, ignition hot or switch hot. So basically if you were to turn your key, then it sends power um, through this wire whereas the constant hot is directly fed from the battery. So that's getting constant um, power. On the back side here is, you, you can see where all the terminals are located to be able to follow the wiring diagram. And I'll, I'll uh, you know, try to put an image of, of what that looks like um, so, so you guys can check it out for yourself. But in addition to that, I've created, you know, this little, sheet here basically identifying every, every wire um, and you know what exactly it is so I could you know add those labels up here and it also is a, um, a template um, for my for my fuse block here so so for example on the first circuit the original fuse block had a two and a half amp circuit for your instrument lights. So, which is the um, blue and the red wire. So there's actually two of them. So again, the blue and the red, one going to the hot side, the other side following the fuse. Um, so, and that's gonna run on an independent source. So again, blue and red coming in, followed by fuse and out with the other blue and red wire. So basically I, that's what I've created here. Um, in with blue and red, the size uh, fuse that is required, uh, blue and red out, and then what, what circuit is called. So following that, the next item would be the uh, constant hot. So you have a black and yellow, um, and then come with a seven and a half amp fuse and fall, coming out of that would be a green and yellow wire, um, which would feed your dome lights. So again, here's a green and yellow and here's the uh, black and yellow. So again, constant hot coming in, green and yellow coming out to, for, your, for, your, for your dome lights. And then of course, in between all that is a fuse. Now, after I, cut all these wires off the existing fuse block. I'm going to attach, um, you know, one of the, a new ring terminal. That way it can fit, you know, inside um, through the new fuse block here. And so these specific ring terminals are actually 
really nice and I like them a lot because they're they're heat you can heat shrink um, you know this little blue section here and they're also have an adhesive um, lining on the inside so that way they're perfectly sealed and um, insulated so which is which is nice and they work out really well all right let's go ahead and get started first um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut off the wires for the um, instrument light which is the blue and the red wires again there's uh, two blue and red wires um, right here so I'm going to go ahead and, and cut those off, add the ring terminal, and then attach it to the, to the new blade fuse block. So of course, before you cut the, all these wires off, the, the one thing that you want to do is make sure that the uh, <clears throat> that the battery is um, obviously disconnected because you definitely don't want to shock yourself doing some of this stuff. So what I've decided to do since I have all my wires labeled um, is go ahead and just add all the um, add all the terminals, ring terminals to the wires here. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and um, heat shrink everything. Now one thing I notice here for the, the cigarette uh, lighter wire, um, the wiring diagram actually says um, that this wire is supposed to be blue and white, but mine is obviously not blue and white. It's uh, in my case, it's red and white. So that's something just to to keep in mind that you may have a wire that could be slightly different from the factory wiring diagram, which you would think they would make them what they're labeling them as or illustrating them as in the wiring diagram. So it's quite odd that they that they did that. One thing that's nice about labeling your wires is that, um, especially if you get a good label maker, and I have a, a label maker by Brady um, that comes in very handy for something like this, especially when you're trying to chase a bunch of wires. Um, but you can actually just, you know, leave those labels on those wires up there forever, so which is which is nice. Okay, so now the reason why I left these two wires here, um, and I noticed this as I was labeling them, but the black and red wire and this white wire or off-white wire are both connected to the same terminal right there. And i um, not sure why that is. So the wiring diagram actually has just the red and the black wire connected to that terminal, but it doesn't have any, any indication or illustration of that, of that white wire. So not sure why they're combined here, but I guess for the purpose of this, what I'm going to do is cut these off and then combine them to the same um, ring terminal or one ring terminal. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to leave it like that in the future. I may um, split it off and, 
you know, give it its own circuit for those, those two wires. But I guess since it's working like this right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and leave it as is. should be it adding all of the uh, ring terminals on the existing wires here's the old fuse block cut, them, cut off all the wires down there I'm gonna add now the wires to the new fuse block but first before I do that um, I want to go ahead and heat shrink um, all of these uh, new ring terminals on there that way they're nice and sealed and um, it actually makes it look a little bit better too all right I got my little well, actually it's not really little but on uh, my Wagner heat gun here um, now you could use a hair dryer or some kind of you know lighter or whatever but I like to use a heat gun just because it's it's a little bit safer in my opinion. We got all the wires um, heat shrunk, so um, they all look pretty good. And uh, now all we're gonna do is, uh, you know, follow again our diagram and our um, our labels on the wires and um, attach it to the new fuse block. So first off, what I'm gonna do is start with the independent source, um, which is the blue and red wire. Um, so there's two blue and red wires fed off a two and a half amp um, fuse, um, and uh, those are for the instrument lights. So I don't actually have a two and a half amp fuse, so I'm going to be using a five amp fuse here, I'm just rounding up to the to the nearest one that I have as close as possible. So I'm going to grab my two blue and red, and then of course what I've done earlier is labeled them instrument light because that's what circuit it's going to go to so i got them there and again these are independently sourced so i'm going to go ahead and uh, screw these wires in okay there's the first circuit so the next um, the circuit that I'm going to go ahead and do is obviously get the uh, black and yellow wire, which is the constant hot wire. And uh, I'm going to add my little jumper here because I want that constant hot water wire to also feed the third circuit um, for the cigarette lighter, which is going to be the red and white wire. So first I'm going to find my black and yellow and then just double check. Um, I previously labeled it constant hot, so that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, got the constant hot wire, got that little jumper um, right here. So I'm not going to actually have a wire going into this terminal here, so I'm going to put the screw back in. And that's actually going to be the same case for this one down here. 
I'm gonna have a have a jumper there for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and put the, the black and green wire here for the ignition hot. Um, go ahead and find that black and green right in here. Again, it's labeled ignition hot as I labeled it previously. And go ahead and, and put it here. Go ahead and basically finish the left side of my block, which is all the hot wires coming in. All right, so now I'm gonna attack the right side here. Um, so I'm gonna find my green and yellow, which will feed the dome. Oh, that wire is a little short. Let me come back to that. I'm gonna come back to that last because it's gonna turn this box around and it's gonna be hard to, to show you guys what's going on here. So um, I'm gonna skip the the green and yellow wire for the dome light and go to the red and white for the cigarette lighter um, which is right right here now this particular circuit requires a 50 amp 50, 14 amp fuse um, which was the which was there previously from the original fuse block but um, we don't have a 15 amp fuse so again just rounding up to the next fuse, which is a 15 amp fuse. So the next is this circuit here for the all the accessories. Um, and that requires a 14 amp. And again, I'm going to be using a 15. Um, this one is the one that was a black and red wire, but also had a white wire to it. So um, have two wires going into one ring terminal. And this one is a little short too. There you go. That's the black red with the white going into that terminal there for um, all the accessories. And I'm going to take the bla brown wire, uh, which is off a 20 amp fuse uh, for the heater. And that's going to go here in this last open spot. Again, I'm going to come back to that little green one because that's the one that was pretty short. Again, highly suggest a magnetic tip or else you get that falls right off. Okay, last but not least, we're going back to that green and yellow wire um, off that seven and a half amp fuse for the dome. This one is uh, again, a little short, so Not so bad. And that's it guys. Took the old fuse block, replaced it with the new blade style block. Looks good. So there you go. So the last thing that I highly suggest we do here is, um, you know, go back to your, your wiring diagram and uh, make sure that all the wires um, are connected to the correct spot on the block. So, Again, just double checking with the blue and the red at the top there. Got a five amp fuse. Um, originally there was a two and a half amp fuse. Over here, we got the constant hot with the black and yellow and seven and a half amp fuse feeding the dome light, which is the green and the yellow. And then I got a jumper here. Um, then um, they're basically feeding the constant power from this terminal to this terminal to be able to feed that 15 amp fuse into this side here, which is the red and white um, for the cigarette lighter. And then jumping down to the ignition hot um, with the black and green wire and with a jumper to uh, this terminal and this terminal. That way, once the ignition um, is on, then all three of these um, circuits here get hot. And this circuit here with a 15 amp uh, fuse is for the, all the accessories and again this is the one with the black red wire and the white wire second and last circuit here is a 20 amp circuit um, with a brown wire for the heater 
So this down here is basically an open circuit. So if you want to attach, um, you know, another accessory um, there, lights or whatever, um, electric choke, um, that's good. That would be open here, um, coming off any circuit requiring um, an ignition hot circuit. So, and that's just the way it's jumped. I can take that jumper out and make it independent, like just like the the one here for the instrument light, the first circuit. So, either way, I let, that's how I left it open. Um, but looks like everything follows the uh, wiring diagram that I've drawn up. Um, and again, want to just go ahead and and pop this cover on and label each um, window here. Uh, that way, you know what what circuit is what. So uh, I've created a couple of labels here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that um, to this face plate. And um, that should be it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, replacing the old style um, glass fuse block on a 1966 Mustang to this six circuit independent circuit fuse block um, from Blue C Systems, um, yeah. Be sure to, to, to like the video and, and subscribe for more because we got a lot of, you know, things kind of like this. Um, improving the Mustang, fixing a few things. Um, so um, it's a lot of fun. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.